think we can all agree February and March are pretty crazy. And a game that I have been waiting for for a long time is coming out, Elix 2. Now, Elix by Piranha Bytes, it's a third-person action-adventure RPG in a futuristic apocalyptic world filled with magic, high science fiction, and possible aliens all inside of it. The original game, and well, a lot like a lot of Piranha Bytes games, never pandered to anyone. Most of the time you're playing the game, both this one or the original, it feels like a game made by some friends where they want to play it. And then they realize, hey, you know what? Maybe we can sell this. Let's see if it was worth selling it. Subscribe to the channel. Join the patron if you want. You'll see some more videos from me this week. Presentation. So... February, like I said, it's been almost stupidly fabulous. So going from Forbidden West, let's say, to Elden was a step down in graphic fidelity, though it could be considered a step up in art frame and look if you like Elden Ring. Elix 2 makes you ask what it would look like to play a game that's at least a generation old. It's not for the lack of some trying, but let's be honest here. Everyone who starts a race isn't a winner, and the world is pretty large, and there's strange groups you meet that could be bunkered down in scientific science centers that look like they belong in No Man's Sky, or your own home home base, for instance, which looks just like Connor McLeod in the Highlander's old castle. Trust me, that's not a place you want to live. Elix 2 has its own idea of post-apocalyptic, and for that I'm going to give it credit. It's not exactly like anything else. You could draw some comparisons to the Fallout games, but I feel like, especially in Elix 1 and 2, I actually like the intricate designs of their cities more than most of the cities in the Fallout games. They have little touches, like paintings on the wall remade and stretched into larger frames. And, and the cities that are there, they always have a very cool lived-in feel, other than some of the outposts that have a rustic look, but there's usually nobody in there. And that's a problem with Elix 2, not only in its presentation, but I'll tell you later about it in the story. It's that there's not a lot of people in this world, despite it looking like there should be a ton of people in this world. It's not like Skyrim, where the same 12 12 rednecks are ended up paying for the entire economy of the entire town, but you do have a lot of places that look incredibly lean. You also have some awesome parts like traders moving around the game world with their own guards and you can actually track them on the map moving all the way around. I like the various set pieces here, ruined cars along old side factories, but one big hit against the game is that for the most part, every single enemy is just placed there doing nothing else. And that gives it an almost wow, not red dead kind of feeling to it. Just enemies waking up in the morning, kissing their bug wife's antennae, and then flying into the game world, only to root themselves in a spot, waiting for you to aggro them. Or, if you're unlucky enough to have a companion, waiting for him to randomly aggro them, even though you just want to run by him, and then having to go and waste your time saving his ass as he gets tossed around the game world. But the companions can also look cool at times. They can save your bacon with a well-aimed strike, or they'll jetpack in behind you in a battle, and it's got this poor man's Django Fett kind of feel to it. But you could only charitably say that the companions in the game have no safeties on their guns. In fact, they just have full auto and random fire. While Elix 2 does have some improvements, it actually doesn't look a great deal better than Elix 1. Some improvements were made, but things like attack animations from players and humans in particular look really rough, or Jax randomly going into a climbing animation on a steep slope for absolutely no reason whatsoever. How does all this perform, though? Well, a lot of games, when you see that they're doing Eurojank, you assume, ah, oh, this thing's not going to run the best. For me, this is where I was completely surprised. The 3080 gives much higher than 60 FPS through most of the time. There's a couple stutters when you're leaping off huge hills or wait until that last minute to engage your jetpack, but I was actually quite surprised how well this ran. You do have a scale option in there, so you can run the game at 4K, but then turn that scale down to 90, 80, 70, 60% if you want to get some FPS back. There's some pop-in which happens around the world as well, and it is highly noticeable. Sometimes you get this awesome look in place, something in the distance, but usually the closer you get to it, the more you think, damn, this is a dump. But due to the art style as well as the technical details, one place where you do see some current looks are some of the lighting effects through trees and in darkened areas. But I'll tell you what, it actually performs well, which in this day and age is sort of surprising. Let's talk about some audio for a second. Help you with something. Speak up and talk fast. Then you must be the blacksmith. Mm-hmm. Guess I must. I see. You want a healing elixir for your nose. What would you say if I offered you command of a larger troop at a permanent location? I'm a berserker warlord. I have my responsibilities. Shh. 
sound wise, this is OK. There's some environmentals. I like the weapon effects overall. They're fine. There's some psi effects and spell effects that you can get later on, but it's nothing really to write home about. And usually it's a bit leaner than I would have actually liked to give me a feeling of atmosphere. For example, the sound of birds can fool a player into thinking, hey, there's birds. The hint of action far off can do the same or too much if you're talking about Dying Light 2. But Elix 2 doesn't really like to hint. It's what you see is what you get for the most part. And importantly, that makes sense when you actually do see the enemy. But overall, it doesn't feel very lived in. When it comes to the voices, so these are bog standard Elix. And because of the translation, a number of the sentences are missing words. They have weird tense errors in them. And you could say for some groups that pays off. They use Elix, which castrates emotion down to short sentences about duty and how children of the future, workers and slaves. But the tone switches around a good deal. Is the music better? It's pretty forgettable. It's not bad. It's got a few good tracks, but most here are just ambient things playing in the background as you explore. Sometimes somber, sometimes just sounding like they're happy to be there. It's sort of all over the place musically. It's not terrible. They fit within the game, but you could easily turn them off and not really feel like emotional points or poignant points were missed. Speaking of emotion and poignancy, let's talk about gameplay and see if we shed a tear over all the drama. Elix 2 continues the story of Jax. Now, he's an alb who uses Elix to save the world. What Elix does is it neuters their feelings. He saved the world, or at least some of it, by killing almost everyone in it. The game starts with Jax now living alone in what appears to be a haunted house, having only dirty jeans, a ripped-up shirt, and some pretty shitty bedding as his possessions. Then, six years of this relative peace is shattered. In that time, Jax met and married Aloy from the Horizon Games and had a kid. But apparently, a new enemy is unhappy with Jax's obnoxious, successful life and throws a bunch of meteorites at his home, destroying it and making Jax worry about him and his separated family, and thus begins another quest across the world. A changed world. For example, when you know anything about the factions from Elix, they made the difference. For example, here, the clerics in the game have been almost destroyed, barely hanging on to life in a couple small locations in ramshackle homes. The outlaws are still a menace, but they are having some problems of their own, both created by their actions as well as new situations in the world. The Albs are holding in there, but only because Jax destroyed their leader, and that's changed their entire way of life. So, of course, they hate him, at least most of them do. Your jobs and actions span across the world, taking these odd jobs, fixing up your stronghold, bringing talented people from around the world to work for you and doing jobs for others to get them to join up with you. Sometimes they come easy and sometimes they require quests or other actions to get them to join in. This is also where we see Elix 2 do its best. It's not necessarily open-ended, but some of the quests are how you go about things. One of the first quests you have actually asks you to find some items, but it's marked on a couple different places on the map, so you can pick and choose which one to go to. I like any kind of that flexibility. Even the good guys don't think of him as altogether safe. It's his destructive nature. Is he a loose cannon? Is he doing things just enough to get the job done? Do people want a peacemaker on their side? And everybody's level can look at that and decide to raise it up or down and then spread those rumors around the game world. Quests don't exactly incite though. Let's be honest. Some are cool. You search out mysteries, you do murder investigations, and a couple I can't talk about due to spoilers. They're actually pretty cool. The world has this alternate earth feel to it. And I will just say that I liked that part. While Jack starts out in the game in one style as well, in the full RPG roster of things that you expect, you can make huge changes. When you go up in a level, you can raise his basic attributes, as some weapons do require a ton of strength to shoot or require more energy to use. And you can also gain a tremendous number of skills from trainers around the world, from lock picking to movement combos. Also, around the game world are places to craft and places to adjust weapons and add slots to different items. And yes, the game's got jetpacks. That's right. Talk to any longer term fan of Elix One and someone's going to mention the jetpack to you. Once you got it in that game, it changed the world. It offered tons of strategies for battles, thievery, and even just exploring. So the developer said, screw it. Here you go. Pretty much right from the start of the game. But as a starter jetpack, don't get in your head. You're going to be afterburner and across the post-apocalyptic wasteland. You need upgrades for that because it's not very fast and it burns an intense amount of energy. This game, though, it's Eurojank personified. Don't get me wrong. Eurojank really is a thing. Games that try a ton of stuff but never really have the polish to nail everything. So at times they can be these awesome sandboxes with a giant warning on them that says, do what thou wilt, but prepare for it to fail. Combat 
is not necessarily a fail, but it doesn't feel great. It's pretty stiff. You can switch between any weapons you have on a quick dial, switch between light and heavy attacks, bolster yourself up with all manner of potions, and use the jetpack to just run away. That advantage there is something you should never ignore. Lock-on works well enough, and the entire game being played in third person does try to keep it from having you fight the camera. One thing I loved about the game is that I said the skills and how they work. Many skills require physical and mental stats to actually buy them. Now, so people might rankle at this, but for me, it's one part of the game I loved. Meaning, getting a level in the attribute wasn't just about putting on that extra cool bit of armor, switching out for a more powerful weapon or power. While you get to join some of the factions right from the start, Elix 2 continues that belief that you have to do multiple things to get anything good in the game, and some of the factions require you to be parts of other factions to get to them. But guess what? That pays off in ultra-powerful tools. Elix itself wasn't an amazing game. It was, to me, though, fun game despite its issues, a pure form demonstration of why I have fun factor in my reviews, because it wasn't a looker, that's for sure. With comrades, with updated weaponry, with new armor, Elix 2 is at its jankiest best when it's like the original, a weird recipe of, let's try this, but forgetting to put the timer on the cook time, and some things are going to come out burnt, like companion AI, which puts the artificial in but forgets intelligence almost completely. There aren't a lot of surprises in how it plays or feels, and exploring still draws you into something, and it can be interesting but it's not going to bring new fans to it. In fact, Elix had some improvements and some differences, but Elix 2 feels like it's just smaller improvements. It tries things, it fails at some, tries other things and succeeds, but I got to be honest, man, around every corner is a sign that polish isn't up to AAA standards, or at times even AA, and the competition is different than where Elix originally released. It was still fun, but there wasn't a lot of surprise in it. And speaking of surprise, let's talk about the rating. So this is actually still in flux. I will say it's probably a wait. It has some issues. Elix 2 doesn't seem as unique as the older game, and that's only due to the current competition. But also, Elix 2 really goes out there and feels older and clunkier. It does have some unique magic and fun. It's just home alone a lot of the times, though. I would love to see more characters walking around, and I would love to see some improvements there in the world building that I think we could still have and not really push this budget completely out of control. So anyway, that's it for me. I hope you guys like this video. I'll be updating the review in the pinned comments as well as possibly doing a video on it, and we'll be talking about it during the podcast when I can talk about more stuff because some of this stuff is spoilery. I don't want to really discuss it here. I would love for you guys to share this, spread it around, jump into the Discord, jump into the Patreon, follow me on Twitter, and subscribe here. It absolutely helps the channel. Peace out, and if you get Elix, I hope you like it.